series, and we already have our first team advancing mm -hmm. out of the division series round. Texas Rangers beating the Baltimore Orioles, sweeping them. They have not lost a game yet this playoffs, and they are advancing to the ALCS. I think the craziest thing for the Rangers is they had never swept a playoff series in franchise history until this year, and they have now swept back-to-back -back series. Hats off to the Texas Rangers because the last week of the regular season was not some of their best work. But the moment the postseason started, they have turned into a completely different team. The team that we saw for that chunk of the season where they were one of the best teams in baseball. Well, they were one of the best teams in baseball for that chunk of the season because of their offense. Yeah. And that's what we've seen from them over the last few days, over the last couple of weeks, really, since the playoffs started. Uh, look, they, they put up 18 runs in the last two games of this series. Yep. And they did enough in game one of the series to win in Baltimore. And, and then their offense just takes over, right? And, and that's what we've seen from them. Uh, the usual candidates and usual suspects and Corey Seager and Marcus mm -hmm. Simeon, but uh, Evan Carter, fantastic. Evan Carter adds a totally new dynamic to this Ra Rangers offense. You got a 21-year-old kid. He just turned 21. That is one of the best players already in baseball at working counts, getting deep into counts, um, putting pitches in a pitcher. Uh, I've been super impressed by him. Adolis Garcia, a big game tonight, mm -hmm. uh, hit a home run that we saw, uh, which was huge for the Rangers. The offense has been firing on all cylinders. And when the Rangers' offense is firing on all, on all cylinders, they're really difficult to beat. And that's what, that's what made them one of the best teams in baseball. It's what they live and die by, yeah. right? And literally with them this year, they live and die by the offense. That series in Seattle to end the year, they couldn't score. We saw them lose that series and lose the division because of it. But when they're going well, they're really tough to beat. And we saw the pitching do enough this series as well, including in game three. Nate Evaldi was awesome. Mm -hmm. Jordan Montgomery has been great throughout the playoffs. The Rangers, hats off to them. Like you said, Alex, they had never swept a playoff series ever. In, in their franchise history. history. And they, they've now done it twice in the span of a week and a half. Uh huh. Congratulations to them. They did four of their five victories were all on the road. Yeah. Two in Tampa against a team that many people were saying would beat the Rangers. Then you go and play the best team in the American League all year long mm -hmm. in the Baltimore Orioles. They went two on the road there in that crazy environment. Yep. And then they finally get a home game. And guess what? They end up winning the series, advancing, and getting to celebrate there down on the field. And uh, we got to see the live celebrations here and, and be a part of that. Um, this has been a, a cool day for the Rangers. I mean, how special is it for these fans? They've, as you mentioned, four playoff games they have had. Not one has been at home. And the first one that they have at home, they clinch and move on to the ALCS. But if you were to have told <laughs> Rangers fans, hey, you're going to get to the ALCS and your pitching's also going to be great, but you're not going to have Jacob deGrom and you're not going to have Max Scherzer. Your two aces that you picked up throughout this year that was the question yeah. mark. That was the big concern heading into the postseason. And their pitching has been lights out. Well, imagine, Alex, imagine being a Rangers fan the day before the season. Yeah. And somebody telling you, hey, you're going to end up in the ALCS. But you're not going to have Jacob deGrom. And Max Scherzer is going to be out, too. You'd say... Well, that's not good about DeGrom, and how the hell did we get Max Scherzer? Uh -huh. And now here we are, and that's been exactly the case. Jacob DeGrom out for the year, obviously, with the injury. Max Scherzer ends up being traded to the team at the trade deadline, one of the biggest trades we saw, and he gets hurt. Now they haven't had him. The, the Rangers front office deserves so much credit for how they constructed this team. And I had my doubts. Yeah. I had my worries. Everyone I did. thought they threw too much at Jacob deGrom mm -hmm. with the risk that came about there. Yep. And I won't disagree with that. That ended up being right. But they didn't end up needing him to get to where they have. Which is crazy. Which is crazy. And they deserve so much credit for the pieces they added around him. Right? For what they did to the offense. Uh, for when they brought guys up at the right time. And for adding Bruce Bochy to all of this. Probably been, the biggest pickup. Probably the biggest pickup. And, and again, I, I mentioned Max Scherzer being the biggest pickup at the trade deadline. Yeah. Well, right now, Jordan Montgomery's looking like yep. the biggest pickup at the trade deadline for how good he's been in these playoffs. I just think the front office deserves so much credit. We'll obviously give a lot of credit to this team. But Bruce Bochy and that front office, for what they've done to the Rangers this year, this has been a two-year turnaround.
Yeah. We talk about the Orioles and how fast their turnaround was. Within right? three years. Yeah, the 100-plus loss season to then the 100-win season all within three seasons. The first time yeah. that's ever happened in MLB history. But, yeah, you got to talk about the Rangers as well, being kind of in a similar position where everyone counted them out. No one thought they could get to the postseason, let yeah. alone get far into the postseason.